Oops. Okay. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, what we need to do um, in this case is we have our n, which is a sub 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and then we have the current values. Now, I will tell you automatically, ladies and gentlemen, once, whenever I'm looking at something like this, and I have some alternating signs, we know that's going to incur our, uh, we're not going to incur a negative uh, value raised to the n power. So automatically, when I want to find the rule for a sub n, since I have alternating signs, I know the first rule for alternating signs was we had negative 1 raised to the n. All right? Because now we know if I, if I put 1 in for there, I'm going to have negative 1 raised to the first power, which is now going to make the first term negative. If I put a 2 in there, negative 1 squared will be positive 1, which will make the second term positive. And then it keeps on alternating depending on this if this is odd or even. So whenever you see alternating signs, you're going to want to look for that. All right? Now we have our lovely fractions we have to deal with. Now, fractions aren't as bad if you just think about it one term at a time. So now let's forget about, let's forget about um, the negative sign. And let's just look at how does my term relate to the number of value it is. So if this is my first value, to get to 2, what do I have to do? Add 1. To go from 2 to 3, what do I have to do? Add 1. So could I then rightfully say then it's just n plus 1 for the numerator? And then let's go and look at the denominator. If I have my first term as 1, to get to this, denom this value I have n plus 2. So rather than trying to look at this always as you know, one big picture, just break it down. Once you see that you have an alternating sign, we go ahead and take a look at this. Then when you have fractions, don't try to always you know, confuse fractions. Just break it up, one numerator and denominator, so you can do them individually. Okay. Um, the other thing, too, is a lot of times we've been going through our problems where it starts with a positive number rather than starting with a negative. So that means if it starts with a positive, that means n has to be even, right? So if this was positive to negative, then positive to negative, you could just do like n plus 1, and that would, that would offset it. So it, the first term would be even. But that's a different example. I just wanted to mention that because you guys, we didn't go over one of those examples. So that's it. That's the rule. Answer your question? Yes. yes. 